My name is Alexey Yepishev. Our today's lesson is dedicated to different data operations in Quartz Composer and especially to iterators and queues. We'll learn about them on the example of simple paint composition. First of all, let's make a template for our comp. It will include clear, billboard, render in image, rendering destination dimensions, patches. The last patch returns viewer's current dimensions in Quartz Composer units and in pixels. Let's connect its outputs to respective inputs of render in image patch. This will prevent pixel loss while rendering graphics. Also set billboard's width to 2 for full viewer area rendering. Now we are ready to program the main part. We will work inside the render in image patch. First of all, create billboard and set its width, for example, to 0.1. You will see a flickering image. To disable it, go to render in image settings and switch on enable feedback rendering option. Also switch on disable depth buffer to reduce the amount of VRAM used. Let's create a kind of brush, which is a small sample image to render on a billboard. I choose Radial Gradient Generator from a patch library for my sample image. To get transparent fall off, we need to change color 2 from black to transparent by setting its opacity to 0. For the difference, you can also try loading images from your disk. The choice of an image can be free and depends on aesthetic preferences. But it is always better when a sample picture contains alpha channel. Now I can connect generator to billboard. Next what I am going to do is control. I prefer to control my object by mouse, so I choose a mouse patch. Connect X and Y position from mouse to the same positions of billboard. Now you see that our gradient is following a mouse cursor. An absence of clear patch inside a rendering image patch leads to keeping previous frames visible and gives us an effect of painting. To achieve a transparency instead of a black, switch blending mode from replace to over. In this mode, billboard begins to accept alpha channel. You can also try other blending modes. Let's now perform colorization. Choose interpolation patch and HSL color patch just like in previous lesson. Make connections. Now a color of gradient changes from frame to frame. Next, what I am going to do is to make a gradient scale to depend on cursor's velocity. For this, I need to calculate cursor velocity vector length. Choose derivative patch twice and connect inputs to X and Y positions of mouse patch. Now choose mathematical expression patch. To find vector length, use the formula of distance. Also, let's divide a value by 50 for calibration. A result goes to billboard's width.
Now in a viewer window we can see an intensity of painting. Let's group these patches. Choose them and click Macro Patch. Also, you can rename inputs and outputs by pressing Command plus 3. Resulting composition is very simple, nevertheless, a picture looks too static and I'd like to get some kind of a pulsing gradients. So let's try another approach. You can keep unused renderers in place simply disabling them. In disabled condition they don't use any video memory. Insert clear patch to clear frame buffer. To let any gradient live its own life after it was painting, we need to use Quiv. First, we need to collect all varying parameters into one organized set. Choose Named Struct Maker Patch. Press Command plus 2 and switch a number of inputs to 3. Name inputs X, Y and Scale and then connect to respective parameters. Now choose Quiv patch. Let's restrict the number of elements. Set Quiv size to 100. Connect structure output to Quiv's value input. Also, we need a rule for quiff filling. Let's say that the filling will happen only when the mouse is moved. To make this, select Watcher patch twice and connect it to X and Y position of the mouse. To use logic rule, select Mathematical expression and type this expression. It means that result is true when x or y changes. Then connect result to Quiv's filling input. Let's also group these patches. After all this, we get a structure of 100 numerical sets that contain X, Y and scale data. Now we need to visualize data. For this we will use an iterator. Choose Iterator patch. Note that it is a macro patch, so we can work inside of it. Choose Iterator Variables patch, also insert billboard, structure index member and structure key member. To use incoming structure inside Iterator, we need to publish structure index members structure input. Let's call it data. Connect index input to iterator variables index. Switch level up and connect recently published structure to Quiv's output. Set a number of iterations equal to Quiv's length. Insert input splitter and connect to iterations. Now we need to spread out a given member since it is a set of data. 
Duplicate structure key member twice by pressing Command D. Name the first key, X the second key, Y the third key scale. Connect inputs to member output. Now let's make final connections. Connect X member to billboard's X position, Y member to Y position, scale member to width. Now about our gradient images. There are actually two ways to transmit this data into an iterator. First is to quiff images. Remember that the gradient color interpolates. This method is very useful when you capture video input frames, for example. The second is to include hue data into existing data quiff and then apply it to HSL color patch inside an iterator. I'll try the second. First, publish billboard's image input and connect it to generator image. Disconnect color from gradient and set its own color to white. Then increase number of named inputs to 4 and name the new one Hue. Connect to interpolation output. Now inside an iterator duplicate key member again and name it Hue2. Insert HSL color patch. Make connection. Lower luminosity and connect color to billboard's color. That's it. We now see a resulting picture, but still not all looks so good. First of all, switch blending to over. Now we can notice a rough disappearance of objects. So let's add alpha rule for structure members inside an iterator for smooth fade out. Simply connect alpha input of HSL color patch to iterator variable's current position that varies from zero to unity. Okay, now let's bring a life to our picture. Choose LFO. Set amplitude to 0 0.01 for weak oscillation. Connect LFO offset to scale member. Result to width. Now let's play with the face. Create an expression, index multiplied by 10, and connect to index and to face. Note that the face is measured in degrees. Now you can see beautiful chains of pulsing objects. Let's move to root macro page and answer the question. Why do we perform root rendering in image? This becomes very suitable when you want to place any effects on a resulting image. Just insert it before the main billboard and admire the beauty. <laughs> 